as many of you may already know, Haley Okula of RN New Grads, who after a long struggle with infertility became pregnant and delivered at the end of March. Um, unfortunately, right after her baby was born uh, in a C-section, um, she suffered an a AFE or amniotic fluid embolism and died. Um, you can go to my IG to watch the interview done with her spouse to get more details um, about exactly what happened. But amniotic fluid embolism is something that is absolutely devastating and it's terrifying. Fortunately, it's not very common, but it's terrifying and outcomes for both patient and neonate can be pretty catastrophic. So I'm going to take a few minutes here to talk to you all about amniotic fluid embolism. So amniotic fluid embolism is also known as anaphylactoid syndrome of pregnancy, and it is the result of something called a cytokine storm. We are not for sure exactly what incites this cytokine storm, but we do believe it is typically something in the amniotic fluid that gains access to the maternal vascular system. Um, that starts this process. So what we think is, happens is that when these foreign materials enter the maternal vascular system, the pregnant individual mounts an immune response. And it's a severe immune reaction where their body releases too many cytokines into the blood too quickly. And when I mean too quickly, I mean like that. So we very rarely have any warning. It happens and then the patient has cardiovascular collapse. Now to diagnose an AFE, the first thing we need to do is make sure there's no other identifiable cause for what's happened. And we suspect AFE uh, when we have a patient who is laboring or recently postpartum, who experiences sudden cardiovascular collapse, severe respiratory difficulty and hypoxia, uh, and then DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulation. There are a typical cases that occur in about a quarter of patients uh, with AFE and they present only with acute respiratory failure and hypotension, um, or it starts with DIC. And here are the criteria for diagnosis of AFE. You can pause to read. Experts agree that the use of these criteria exclude patients who did not have an AFE, but may not capture all patients who have an atypical AFE. Now, it is estimated to occur in 1.9 to 6.1 cases per 100,000 deliveries, um, and that's looking at data from Australia, Canada, the Netherlands, UK, and the United States, but we have to consider that all of these studies from the different countries are using different diagnostic criteria. I won't go into the pathogenesis or the whole process of what happens to the body during AFE, but the main components are right ventricular heart failure, acute pulmonary hypertension, activation of factor 7 and platelets and the release of inflammatory mediators that activates the coagulation cascade and that results in DIC. Hemorrhage from DIC results in hemorrhagic uh, instability and you can also have uh, multi-organ failure from DIC as well. There are no known identifiable risk factors for AFE other than being pregnant and delivering or childbirth. One third of patients will have an aura, and that's where um, they experience a sudden sense of doom, chills, nausea, vomiting, agitation, anxiety, or change in mental status. And if you listen to the video uh, interview of Haley's husband, Matt, she did have an aura. Then the patient will have sudden cardiorespiratory failure or arrest, then hemorrhage. They may also have seizures and stroke. If this happens while the patient is still pregnant, the risk to the fetus is great and getting the fetus delivered ultra emergently, emergently is key to prevent uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy to the neonate. AFE is one of the leading causes of maternal mortality and uh, is the cause of up to 10% of maternal deaths. If the patient does survive an AFE, the prognosis overall uh, is generally poor. It's estimated that up to 85% of patients who do survive an AFE will have significant neurologic injury uh, due to uh, lack of oxygen to the brain. If this happens before delivery, um, the mortality rate for the neonate is between 20 and 60%, and 50% of those who do survive will be neurologically intact. 
Ideally, if this happens, delivery should be effected within four minutes uh, of the onset of these symptoms in the patient. I work at a center that has everything needed to manage these patients. So the outcome, both maternal and neonatal, is directly related to the resources at the hospital where they're delivering. E directly related. Having all the things available to resuscitate these patients and manage them afterwards should they survive, having a level four NICU, having all the things is critical for not only survival, but for intact survival, meaning intact neurologic survival for both the patient and the neonate. Unfortunately though, even with all the things, there will be patient and neonatal loss because this is a um, catastrophic event.